Hey guys, welcome to Spiritual Musings of a Popcorn Brain. I've decided to do season two about me so that you can understand who I am and where I'm coming from. So each episode I'll give you some insight into my history as to why I think and believe the way that I do. My daughters were born the Tuesday after Thanksgiving in the evening, and that Christmas season was very strange. We began our treks to the NICU every day. The path between our house and there became very familiar. My mother and father-in-law lived maybe two minutes from the hospital where they were born. So we came to visit them a little more often, probably in this time, because they were just right down the street from this hospital. And we were at their house for Christmas Eve, and we got a phone call from the NICU, and we had heard about different things that happened to kids in the NICU and they said that one of our daughters was showing the signs of NEC, N-E-C, which is necrotizing enterocolitis. But she wasn't showing all of the signs and they weren't really sure what to do. So they didn't exactly have a question for us yet, but we said, you know, just continue doing what you're doing and, you know, let us know what you think. And later that evening on Christmas Eve, they called back and they said, we think we're going to have to operate on her because this is everything that's going on and it really does seem like she has this and we want to do an x-ray on her and verify what's going on. We said, yes, do the x-ray. We're on our way. We're not far from the hospital. And they told us that as far as they could tell on the x-ray, that it looked like she had no viable gut. And they wanted to do surgery to open her up and and verify what was going on in there and see what the options were. So we gave the okay for them to do surgery, and I called our music pastor from our church. He and his wife, their youngest, had had different issues and been in and out of hospitals, and to me they would understand the situation we were going through. Uh, At the time I called, though, it was close to 2 o'clock in the morning. And I called, and his mother was there because she was there visiting for Christmas. And I asked if I could speak to Mark, the, the music pastor. And then the next voice I hear is Rebecca, his wife, And at first I was confused, and then I realized later that makes total sense. If some strange woman calls up for uh, a man who's married in the middle of the night, you don't ever give the phone directly to that man. You give it to his wife and let her deal with whatever that means. So I spoke with her, and I laid out for her the situation that we were in the hospital and that we were allowed to have a pastor with us and where we were and they came right away when they got there it was right about 2 30 and the the surgeon came in and spoke with us and said at at this point it's me and my husband and his parents and my mother and our pastor and his wife, and they had put us in a back room in the NICU that they had been using for storage. And the doctor came in and he said, we've opened her up. 
she has lost 75% of her small intestine and half of her large intestine. We can sew her up and you can say goodbye or we can try to save her, but it's not likely she's going to have much of an existence at all. And they said, you have five minutes to decide. (laughs) So they shut the door and my husband started talking to me and and he was thinking we needed to let her go because one of the doctors had already spoken to him about how cruel it is for parents who try to keep their children alive when they're not doing well and it's only for the parents and and he had he had bought into this idea and in his mind she was already gone and i said i can't i can't make that decision i can't make the decision to kill my child if god decides that he needs to take her then he knows what's best. And I will learn how to live with it. But I cannot make that decision. And our pastor prayed for us. And we told the doctor when they came in, we said, do what you can to help her live. And, and it's difficult when you don't know what's going on with your child and you're not sure if they're going to live or die. But the Bible says that we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And it says that he knows what's best for us and that his plans are for our good. They're not to hurt us. And I knew that that meant that even if he were to take my daughter from this earth, that it would be for her good to save her from suffering or whatever it is that would have been in front of her. So you can know wherever you are in whatever struggle that you may be going through, especially if it's with your kids, you know that he has you. If you were following after and seeking him, The Bible says in Romans that he will work all things out for the good of those who love him and serve him. If you don't know him, then ask him. Say, God, I'm having a really hard time believing that you're real, but if you are, show yourself to me. Help me to understand. Help me to know. And he will. If you found this useful or you know someone who would, then please share this with them or subscribe. Thank you for letting me share my popcorn brain.